Okay, 7 p.m. I'm going to call the council meeting for Thursday, February the 22nd, 2024, 7 p.m. in order. Thank you. Before we begin our meeting, we'd like to acknowledge that Stewiak is a Mi'kma'ki ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We have a full slate of councillors. I'm looking for a change or approval to the agenda. Hearing none from council, I have three. Nine and nine J, which is the vacancy council, and Mr. Matheson will discuss that. Nine K is the communication or the recommendation, recommendation. recommendation. So for the fire department. The fire department. And I have a letter to read from a former councilor Chad Ramsey under written petitions and correspondence. So with those changes to have a motion, please. I'll make that motion that we accept the agenda for Thursday, February the 22nd council session as amended. Moved by Councillor Osborne, seconder, please. I'll second. Second by Councillor, excuse me, Berlin. Discussion on the motion. Question. Question is call. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. <clears throat> Disclosure of interest on agenda items. Hearing none, I'm looking for approval of minutes, January 24th, 2024. Councilor Osborne. Just um, one very minor change. Um, I just had it noted, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I had it noted that Councilor Ramsey left at 8.27 and then was back at the table at 8.29. Yes, sir. There was a, I didn't bring the paper with me, Councillor, but there was a period of a few minutes. Councillor, I'm just going to step up. Yeah, it's under 10. Which one, uh, Councillor? Number 10. Oh, well, it's under there. That's okay. where I got it. Yeah, page three or six at the bottom. Okay. Good. I guess I'm looking, I was looking for it up top. Any other changes, Councillor? Okay, a recommendation. All right, so I could have a motion, please. I'll make that. Oops, go ahead. I move to approve the minutes of the January 25th, 2024 meeting, council meeting. Move to Deputy Mayor Chapman, a seconder, please. A second. A second to Council Lutz, discussion on the motion. Question. Question, question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. And we have uh, no announcements or proclamations, no presentations. <laughs> I'm going to read the uh, letter that was sent to council and Chad Ramsey. It's Ramsey has asked me to read it. And to give clarification, I reached out for a municipal advisor to uh, ask advice and where we've entertained those before and have read with us. I'm going to proceed. Excuse me. <clears throat> Getting over this pneumonia, I'm still not 100%, so bear with me, folks. Dear residents of Stewiak, as my time as a town councillor has come to an end, I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude to you. Serving this community for almost three years, or excuse me, three terms, 11 and a half years, has been an honor, and I'm humbled by the trust you placed in me. Rest assured, every decision I made on your behalf, paramount in my decision was the good of the town. Throughout my time in office, I've witnessed commitments to our town by many councillors and residents. The passion, dedication, and tireless effort have been a lasting impact on our community. From volunteering at local events to advocating for important causes, you have shown what it truly means to be an engaged citizen. As a councillor, I have had the privilege of working alongside some remarkable individuals who share a common goal, to make our town a better place for everyone. Together, we tackle complex issues, debated policies, and made decisions that will shape Stewie Act's future. Your input, feedback, and support were invaluable, and I'm proud of my record 
as a STUAC town councilor. While my time in office may be ending, I encourage all residents to continue our civic engagement, stay informed from local matters, attend community events, and participate in discussions that impact our town. More than once, we have shown that we share many common values and come together for the common good. Please have the courage to resist the pressure to make decisions because of special interest of interest or the loudest voice. And as history has taught us, <clears throat> excuse me, sometime even the majority is wrong. Although it's felt that I stepped down from council, that is not the case. In fact, I was removed from council due to a technically technicality of not living in the town for six months, August 17th to February 17th, 2024. I was granted six months, but was unable to move into my our new home due, con due construction delays. A comment was received regarding subsection three and six of section 17 of the Missile Act. <clears throat> Excuse me again. If anybody wants clarification on this, please contact me at 902-890-2917. Your, your voice matters and your contributions make a difference. See you in October. And that was signed by the former Councilor Chad Ramsey. So that was received this morning, Council. Excuse me. You're now going to move into business. The first item of business is a police advisory board, and I'll pass over to Mr. Madison. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, for A and B, uh, I would uh, beg council's forgiveness on this one. It was two reports I intended to get done in the last two days. Other events uh, interfered. I uh, was not able to get those done. Uh, it's not nothing on those is urgent, requiring a decision tonight. So I'll ask your uh, forgiveness and we can defer that until the committee of the whole and we can have a discussion there. Sure. Thank you. No, I see. Uh, this is a verbal update for you on our efforts to <laughs> find a returning officer. Uh, we posted it on our website. We posted it on the town uh, Facebook page. We were getting no response there. We then placed it on the Indeed Jobs website. Uh, we've received uh, no applications that actually even mention returning officers. So there are people who are just doing blanket applications to every job on that site. Uh, so we haven't found anyone who is showing interest in that or has experience with qualifications. So uh, this morning I reached out to uh, my counterparts in Colchester and Toro to see what processes they were going through. They're using the same people from the last, so they hadn't gone through uh, in the hopes that they had a second choice if they'd gone through competition. Uh, they don't have anyone, so then I reached out to Debbie Cavanaugh, uh, at, uh, who will be the Chief Electoral Officer for Municipal Elections uh, this year. I asked for some advice, and she gave me some people to who can circulate it out in the electoral community. So it was the people who do this in various parts of the province, either provincially, federally, et cetera, to see if there's interest there. Uh, when I was talking to our CAO recruiter, I said, if you happen to run across anyone <laughs> in anything, your, your friends who were sitting around the table this week, he would drop the hint that we're looking for a returning officer as well. Uh, just tell them to call me. Uh, happy to hear from that. And, uh, Maybe someone is interested who, who's online this evening, who knows? So if anyone's interested, please contact Town Hall and we'll get you the information on what the duties entail and go from there. So, uh, but uh, uh, Ms. Gatton was very helpful and she said, just uh, we stay in touch. We'll try to work our way through this. So that's the update on that. Can I ask a question? Um, because I know Colchester County and Turo probably use the same ones that they've used for a number of years. Do you think either one of them might have somebody that they might know? Like the returning officer. Yeah, we could, we could, that would probably be the next step is then okay. is, is going through the returning officers we now talk to them, yeah. East Hans, Turo, Colchester, see who else they know. Uh, that may have worked as a DRO. It's all working. Yeah, that, I guess that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so yeah, broken. 
you know, if they're a DRO, they should know basically the process uh, and maybe can help us. So. Thank you, Mr. Basson. <clears throat> Nine D, uh, Recreation Committee says appointment. Is that over to you, Karen? Yeah. So our Parks, Recs, and Events Committee still has vacancies on it for citizens. Detroit, we received an application from Greg Connell um, to be appointed onto the Parks and Rec Committee. So I did circulate his application through to you guys. No, no, no. So we're looking for a motion for that? Yeah, there's a recommendation at the bottom of the yeah, that's okay. Can I ask yeah, uh, just a couple of questions? Um, so I know the deadline was December 31st. Yes. So did we repost that? We didn't um, because we had so many days. We didn't repost it, no. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and does, and I know Greg, I, I think he'd be wonderful. Yes. Um, but does he live in town? He doesn't, but in our citizen appointment or application process policy, it says they can be a director of the business in the town of Studia. I thought that was wrong for business in Florida. Um, so this, our terms of reference for recreation references that citizen appointment process policy. Right. So, and it says in that policy, so... Yeah, I thought it was only for business and tourism. That was my understanding. And I, I'm only asking because yeah. I did have a, a resident reach out. Okay. Um, and they were, they asked to join uh, one of the committees in December. And they live in the county. And they were told, and I don't know who they were talking to. Okay. Um, and they were told no, because they live in the county. Okay. Um, that they couldn't apply. So they didn't apply. Okay. So I, were they... Do they own land or do they own a business or not? I, I okay. that's all I know. Yeah, so he has a mail a mailbox on here and he does operate a business within town. So as for that policy, that's why it's come forth. If you guys don't feel that that's appropriate, then I, I think he'd be great on the committee. I really do. I, I just want to make sure that we are following our policies. And it was my understanding that the outside of town actually was only for business and tourism because it related directly to being a director of a business. Okay. I know that was but so maybe well, Councillor Creelman didn't talk. Yes, Richard and I that. talked about it as well. Um, and in the business and tourism committee, that term of reference was written a long time ago and it mm -hmm. does say um, you own a business or president of, to that effect. Um, and when you look at the overriding, or I feel anyway, I agree with Ms. Richard, the overriding citizen appointment does allow for a business owner to participate in the committee. And I think a committee like this would be certainly appropriate for to approve it. That was my interpretation of it as well. Yeah, okay, with that, I'm going to have a motion, please. <clears throat> So may I just ask one more question? So then we should be should we be advertising it again? We should definitely post it again with yeah. the deadline again. Yeah. Yeah. And then consider Greg at that time. Give people open it up again. We have, if we were to appoint today, we would still have two vacancies on that committee. So okay. there is still room for more applicants yeah. with the deadline and post goes right. through. So and then when we make that, maybe we need to make it clear when we do the posting that you don't necessarily have to be a resident of the town? Well, I think the posting is usually a business. Or the right. citizen appointment policy, is it not? Yes. It yes. does. Mm -hmm. So um, would that not, there is some confusion. Yeah. As an aside, we are, um, I think in our March by on policy committee, um, Ms. Richards asked us to take a look at the terms of reference for the um, <clears throat> recreation committee. So perhaps we can clarify it in there as well, because we're going to look at it anyway for another matter. So should we defer this till we talk about it by long ball? Well, I think that the citizen, in my opinion, the citizen appointment policy would override it anyway, and I think we'd be fine. There's still two more openings on recreation. So much no one would be adversely affected by this. That's my take on it. Yeah. Okay, I'm calling for a motion from council. I so move the committee the whole recommend to council that Greg Connell be appointed to the Parks, mm -hmm. Recreation, and Events Committee. 
Over to that deputy or shall we second it, please? I'll second it. Second to Councilor Furman's discussion on the motion. Question is a call. All in favor? Opposed? So one of the motions should just read the council approves because this is council. Oh, yes. oh, that was yeah. I was just reading what was spelled. My yeah. apologies. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, number nine E, follow phase four report. WSP back to Mr. Nelson. Thank you, Mayor Loy. Uh, I was hoping we were promised by WSC that we would have the that phase four re final report in our hands today at 429. I emailed them to with several question marks asking uh, when we might receive that. Uh, I got an hour later, I got a response. They are working on it tonight to get the final version out. I think we have been moved to the bottom of their priority list, quite frankly. I don't mind saying that. And I will express our displeasure tomorrow. But I, as soon as we receive it, we will circulate it. And I'm sure we will have it on the committee of the whole for March. Thank you. 9F, it's an RFP accessible washrooms at community center. Back to uh, Aaron, Aaron, please. So we posted our tender for accessible washrooms and an accessible entrance into the community center. It closed last week. We received two bids, um, and the two bids were from Global Construction Maritimes and Flagship Construction. Um, the bid amounts are listed on your, your sheet. This um, project, we received funding through enabling accessibility in 2022 in the fall. We had until 2024, uh, March of 2024. So we're in the crunch. <laughs> we're, we're on the timeline now. So we need to um, hopefully award one of the companies tonight and to move forward with the project. Any questions, Council? So is it just as long as we award it by the MMR? Yeah. and. Um, I'm not the finance manager, but as long as we award it and some progress has started and maybe the CAO can help me out here, when you award things before the end of the year, there's, yeah, I need some finance. As well. Lingo helping me here. Um, it's common with most funding when people go to work for provincial and federal governments, they forget all rules of generally accepted accounting principles which require accrual accounting. They don't seem to recognize it, how you incur something. So we we always there's always a give and take, and they expect you to do things in such short and unreasonable times. So there's always give and take asking for extensions if we award it. Will you confirm that? So we go through that process with all of these type grants. So uh, it's unfortunate, but they always give us such a they'll say, oh, we have extra money, but you have to spend it in such a tiny period of time. It's okay. Thanks, Rick. Okay, can I have a motion from council, please? I'll make that motion that town council award the accessibility compliant project to global construction maritime for the amount of one hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred and ninety-four dollars and ninety-six cents. Mm -hmm. Without HST. Excuse me, that was moved by Councillor Osborne. Second, please. I'll second. Second by Councillor Lutz. Discussion on the motion. Question. Question, Question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. 9G, RFP room provider at Community Center. Back to you, Mr. McGee. Um, so we were awarded 59000 and we yeah, unfortunately are not to release um, the name of the organization we received that from because of their policies because they will be doing a release at some point. Um, so within that 59,000, a ring divider at the community center fits the project scope. So um, the plan is to divide the community center in half and hopefully have two different groups going on at the same time. And it would also support emergency facilities such as a comfort center. Oh, awesome. excellent. Any questions, comments before I call the motion? Okay, have a hearing done. Motion, please. I'll make that motion that we accept the bid option one in the amount of $17,450 plus HST submitted. Can I say that? Name? Am I allowed to say that? Name? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Submitted by Creative Support Solutions. Move by Councillor Osborne. A second, please. Second, second by Councillor Roger Lane. Discussion on the motion. Question. Question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Councillor. H, CEO recruitment update. 
uh, Mayor Riley, uh, just to give uh, council an update where that stands. I was in contact with Bailey Murphy and Bassett today. You're probably all aware I've gotten your emails requesting to speak with you. Some may have already spoken with the, re the recruiters. So they're doing that uh, today, more today. There's some schedule for tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday. Following that, they will, their team will get together, coordinate based on that information to come up with uh, some documents to help guide their search, to help to give to candidates who apply to come up with an advertising strategy. Uh, and they will have those documents ready for the committee's approval by Friday, March 1st. So they'll be sent out on Friday, March 1st uh, for feedback and edits from the committee. And then once they're approved, uh, Susan Bailey will go live on the various advertising platforms and reaching out, start reaching out to candidates they may know. Uh, they will then follow up with what they call a milestone uh, email uh, to invite people from shortlist uh, meeting and then to talk with uh, the interview panel and they'll adjust those milestone emails. So that she's going to be, that should come out first week of March as well and she will Get it to me uh, some dates they will be available and then i will circulate to the committee members and we will confirm a time to me to go over ask questions on their documents before they finalize uh and kick the process the next step of the staging process off any questions just a very very brief one do you, will we have somebody in place by the end of june um, we're, we're in end of February now, so advertisements go out in March. They should be, and they'll do some, they should have some, I'm hoping they'll have some short lists into March, early April, okay. till we can interview and that, if there's someone acceptable in that, then it all depends on notice period, et cetera, if they're currently employed elsewhere, uh, and availability, but we're in the ballpark, I, I believe, so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Nine I. Audio, excuse me, audio video of council and council meetings. And we'll back to you. Yeah, just to, an another update, Mr. Mayor, for, for members of council. Uh, if any of you watched or were here for PAC last time, trying a slightly different format on the Zoom meetings, they're going on as a webinar as opposed to a regular Zoom meeting. Uh, so what that means, uh, you recall from Committee of the Whole, we were constantly the, the battle of dealing with various microphones. So this allows us to put it out there as a webinar so their, mic, their microphones aren't on. So uh, I'll say this now. So there are people who want to have citizen comments coming up. If they would, they can use the uh, question and answer. I'll feature down here. There's a Q&A. They should see at the bottom of their screens. And they can put in their uh, questions or comments there. And then uh, when we get to the comment section, I can bring those up uh, for council to see and we can read them out. Uh, and then there's if there's inappropriate ones, we can just dismiss them with inappropriate language or whatever. So, so there's no option for... Um actually asking a question so you have to be i'm just worried about accessibility issues for typing or um well the q a they can put their questions there they have to type it yes they can't speak it uh i'm not that was what we were told so that's something maybe we can I, I have point. some accessibility okay issues around that. yeah okay that's fair comments these these are privacies sure. so that that's a good comment thank you so this is the first stage uh, we did. Uh, we'll also have to look at when there are in-person presentations. I think we, judging by sound quality from last night, we'll ask them maybe we'll maybe have a desk set up together. Okay. Sorry, close this off so they'll be closer to the microphone because the people in the corner were hard to hear and we're going to look at some sound dampening some fabric somewhere or whatever, or just to 
take some of the echo off because if there is all these hard walls and glass, there is some echo back. I did um, watch some of the PAC last night and there were times when I couldn't hear what was being said. Depends on the person, you know, if they project their voice or not. Yeah, so we're but looking at some other, so we're looking at also maybe having a second microphone is another one. This one there, uh, it's easy to, I think, according to Adam, to chain two. Uh, it does, if we went to three, then we probably have to get rid of this one and then buy three new ones to put one on each table. So that's that was another option mentioned by a citizen appointee on one of our committees. So, well, we're just going to keep trying and hopefully we'll get better and better. And so I'll, I'll ask people to speak up and we have to, we'll all learn from it. The chair, you know, make sure you acknowledge who is speaking. Yeah. It makes it easier for people listening to know who is speaking. That was something brought up at Bylaw Policy recently. Yes. To make sure that we do. One step at Yes, well, it's hopefully we'll get to something that works for the large majority of, of citizens on that. So can I ask a question about the recording? Like, how does, like, does it work the same as Zoom? Like, I honestly don't know. Like, so if a citizen wanted uh, to come and listen to the recording, like, does it work the same way? It's, uh, so... He can, we can actually improve the sound a bit by the time the recording is. He's he was going to uh, try tonight to run the recording of last night through some software he has. He's an oh, oh, uh, okay. consultant to sort of filter, see if he can filter the algorithm or filter out some of the background noise. And he's going to send me two to compare, and then if that works, that's what would clear the, the clearest version. Eventually, we'll get up on our YouTube channel. That citizens can access. So, have we decided to do YouTube? That's probably we're we're thinking that because we already have a right. apparently we already have a have a YouTube channel. We just haven't built the password for it yet. <laughs> so we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, but so that we can do it, and then we got to go back and see if we can get our older recordings converted and put up. But uh, you know, I don't know how far back we'll go. It depends on what where they're stored and what the quality is. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Don J. Big to see you on council. A few missed notes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, as reported, we had the vacant seat as of uh, February 21st. Uh, I'll come to the recommendation at the end, but there's, um, so under the legislation, uh, section 13 of Municipal Elections Act, uh, council must meet within four weeks to set a date for a special election. The clerk calls that meeting. I have not called that meeting as yet, uh, because we have the four weeks. I'll come to why in a couple of minutes, uh, to fill up the vacated seat. Uh, so Based on that, the earliest would have been if I had called a meeting for tonight to do that, but that would be less than 48 hours notice, so I didn't. Or I can wait as to call it as late as March 20th, 2024. Uh, further, the act goes on to say the day fixed for the special election shall be a Saturday, not more than 11 weeks after the meeting of the council at which the day was named. So uh, the latest, based on that, if we go the full four weeks, the latest date uh, that we can uh, set a date for a special election is May 1st of 2024. Uh, it also says uh, no special election shall be held for vacancy on a council within the six months preceding ordinary polling day for a regular election unless otherwise determined by the minister or the council. So, and May 1st is obviously less than six months before the regular polling day, which is in October. I forget the exact date. Uh, another consideration uh, is the NS Utility Review Board 
has already approved a reduction in council size for the regular election in October. Uh, and there has been a precedent uh, set where a seat became vacant and council chose not to hold the special election because it would be within six months of the regular election day. I was told that happened once before on the death of a councillor. Uh, and I have seen it in other municipal units as well. Uh, if you chose to go ahead and have a special election, then you would incur almost all the costs of holding a full election twice in the same fiscal year. Uh, our legal obligations are itemized above when I speak about the statutory and uh, talking about strategic priorities workload. Uh, the other thing sort of way, yes, is we still don't have the returning officer for the regular election, so we'll be even under a much tighter deadline to find someone if we decide to hold a special election uh, in the 1st of May. So your, your options as council is to, or to leave the council seat vacant until the regular election, or B, agree on a date uh, for a meeting at which we will uh, set the date for a special election. And it's staff's recommendation uh, that we uh, have the seat vacant until the regular election, but that is only for administrative reasons. This very much is a council policy, and we obviously refer to what you wish to do, so it's more important to me than this. This is definitely a council policy issue that we just give you our input. So. Um, I think it'd be a monumental waste of money today. Yeah. Have an and election, we're going down to four people anyway. And we've we've had this scenario before with this council, with <laughs> in studio council, um, a scenario where there was an empty seat that wasn't filled. So I think that in, in that, what uh, what happens in the event of a tie decision? If it's three three, well, motion to be it. Motion to be it. And in what they. Two to six council, that is a risk. Yeah. I mean, it's a risk if somebody's absent for the day, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we should defer. Not, not have the election and just leave till the agenda. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. We need a motion in that regard to where uh, we should make that a motion and then it's done. That's, that's right. Okay. From that advice, I want to call for a motion, please. Council. I'll make the motion that the Stiak Town Council leave the council seat vacant until the regular municipal election in October 2024. Moved by Councilor Freeman, second by Deputy Mayor Chapman. Discussion on the motion? Question. Question has been called. All in favor? Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Madison. If uh, in regards to the fire department guarantee resolution, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The other call from Committee of the Whole. I brought you a uh, there was a report on this. <clears throat> the fire department is uh, has contract for purchase of fire rescue truck, uh, and they have paid the initial down payment so far. The maximum amount that they would have to borrow. Uh, and it's finally delivered in on it in or about December. November, December would be $700,000. So, uh, I have the form of resolution here uh, for to guarantee for municipal repairs. I'll quickly read it out, and then, and then the motion can be to accept in this form. There'll have to be a couple uh, format changes just because it was a fillable form that they forgot to change the dates on. Uh, so, this is at the Council of the Town of Stuyak. It is a fire department guarantee resolution. The amount is $700,000 for the Stuyak Act and District Volunteer Fire Department for the purpose of a fire rescue truck. Whereas the Stuyak and District Volunteer Fire Department is a registered fire department with the town of Stuyak. Whereas the Stuyak and District Volunteer Fire Department is incorporated by the Societies Act. 
Whereas to the act and district of the fire department is determined to borrow the aggregate principal amount of $700,000 for the purpose of a fire rescue truck by special resolution. I don't have the date of their actual resolution. I have to get that to put in uh, as per section 10 B of the Societies Act. Whereas the Stuyak and the District Volunteer Fire Department has requested the town of Stuyak to guarantee the said borrowing. Whereas section 294 sub 6 of the Municipal Government Act provides a municipality may grant or lend money to or guarantee a loan for a registered fire department for operating for capital purposes, and whereas Section 88 sub 3 of the Municipal Government Act provides that no guarantee of a borrowing by a municipality shall have effect unless the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing has approved of the proposed borrowing for adventure and of the proposed guarantee. Be it therefore resolved that the Council of the Town of Stuyak is hereby approved borrowing by the Stuyak and District Volunteer Fire Department of seven hundred thousand dollars for the purpose set as above that subject to the approval of the minister of municipal affairs and housing of the guarantee the municipality unconditionally guarantee repayment of the principal and interest of the borrowing so made that upon the issue of the debentures the mayor and clerk of the municipality do sign the guarantee attached to each of the debentures and affix thereto the corporate seal of the municipality I'll make that motion. And how did you say to say it as attached? As read. As read. I'll make that motion uh, that town council approves the fire department loan guarantee resolution as read. Move by Councilor Osborne, second please. Second, second. Second by Councilor Roger Lynch. Discuss my motion. I just said one. I'm oh, sorry. A total guarantees. Outstanding with the fire department. Do we have a rough idea? Uh, I don't know. I forget the total amount. There was a resolution, I think, for 291 that says saying that I forget what the balance owing on is. It and there may be another guarantee out there that they may have paid off, but I haven't seen a release on it. So okay. I can get that information to council reports. Sure. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. I thought Brandon had said both of them were paid off. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Um, I'm going off. Yeah, my memory, which may be faulty. Okay. Question. Question is we call all in favor. Aye. 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 Thanks, Council. We have no bylaw and policy uh, items on the agenda. Looking for assistance, comments, Mr. Matheson, please. Uh, we have a uh, Question, can residents currently view recordings of past council meetings from over the last year or two? If so, how and who do they contact? Uh, they can uh, contact the office. We'll try to make them available, but we, we would ask that the citizens come and view them here. So we maintain things, but eventually they will be as soon as possible put on uh, the internet so that any citizen can access them. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Is that the only comment? Uh, yes. Okay, moving we'll to my report. February the 10th, I attended the public participation meeting at the community center facilitated by uh, Stuyak Kleiner Branch Book. Approximately 60 plus 62 of the residents attended. On the 13th, I enjoyed a pancake supper with my family at the community center. Thank you to our staff. To be at community meals, council members, and volunteers who made this possible. The 21st, I chaired the planning and advisory committee meeting. On the 22nd this morning, I attended the grand opening for the new food land and very late development. Uh, congratulations to Sherry and Darren Schreiber and staff on this momentous occasion. You embody Stuyak Crowd, and I was joined by other councillors, which I'll leave to your report at that meet at that uh, momentous occasion. And in the afternoon, I attended the uh, Joint Regional Transportation Agency public presentation in Toronto. I want to say thank you to our staff and public works for the job you do day in, day out. You are appreciated. And my weekly meetings with Mr. Madison continue. With that, I'll pass over to your Deputy Mayor Chapman, please. I would like to congratulate Darren and Sherry Schreiber for the opening of their new store. It's lovely. And uh, they deserve all good things because they're good town citizens. 
um, corporate citizens, I guess. I attended the PAC Open House at the Community Center. I attended a bylaw and policy meeting here in uh, Chambers. Uh, great job on the Pancake Day in Stoyak, Aaron and Bim. I think it was a huge success. There were 50 for the, the uh, soup luncheon and approximately 150 for the sausage and pancake supper. Uh, former Councillor Ramsey uh, made a huge positive impact on the town and I will personally miss him and I feel that he will be missed around the table. Uh, I hope we will see him again around the table at, after the next election. Thank you. Councillor Ramsey. Uh, nothing today. That's what I was for. Uh, attended the uh, public participation meeting as well on February the 10th. Um, it was very well attended, very respectful, very, um, very much enjoyed uh, the dialogue. It was, um, it was, as I said at the end, uh, after the meeting, I truly do believe that council should probably do more of them. Um, it showed that our town is, is very engaged. Um, also was at the bylaw policy meeting and attended the ground uh, the grand opening for food land this morning as well um, with the deputy mayor and mayor and one other council and I'll lose that to her report. That's it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm um, <clears throat> the past two weeks for me as a councillor have been uh, full of some highs and lows. Public engagement sessions and last night's PAC meeting were very well attended. Many concerns were voiced, and we as a council will have some hard decisions to make. So Tuesday saw two very well attended events at the community center and showing wonderful community spirit. Yesterday, I attended a session on the marketing levy as it moves forward to promote our Colchester region. And later yesterday, I found out Councilor Ramsey would no longer be on council and I'm disappointed with the way the issue was brought forward. I wanna recognize his 11 and a half years of service and thank him for his efforts in make, trying to make Studiac a better place. And finally today, a high with the opening of Foodland. It's a beautiful store and I thank Darren and Sherry Schreiber for their belief in and support of Studiac. And that's wonderful. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. We have a report from Mr. Matson before you. See you the I'll well, just I'll let that go with circulated unless anyone has questions. Okay, hearing none, there's no in camera motion. Notice a motion for reconsideration. 742, we are adjourned. Thank you, Council.